I'm here in Dallas, Texas. We came down here to film uh, a couple people, a handstand program from a real skilled expert, quality product, as well as Pitbull Roll, CrossFit owner. Here in, uh, da he was based out of Houston, and uh, the other guy was based out of Dallas. So we're back in Dallas, this is our last two days here, and I had to check out the JFK where he got shot at. It's a very historic place. This is the grassy knoll right behind us. So John F. Kennedy is a famous American president. As he was driving through Texas, he was assassinated through a, from a sniper window, from a sniper rifle, I believe, on the sixth floor of a bookstore. Then the shooter, shortly after, was shot while in custody by another man. So there's a lot of conspiracy about whether it was a two bullets and what was the cause. And even we asked some local residents here, they believe it was conspiracy. Um, we're going to check it out. We're also going to go to a museum where the killer stood. But yeah, this is the grassy knoll right here. There's people here that give tours. We asked someone. A second. We asked someone, they said he got shot coming out of this exit, coming up here. And that's where he got taken out. Now we're walking over there. Now that's is really quiet on Sundays, which is not something I'm used to, because in New York, we're loud every day of the week. And we're in downtown Dallas right now. So imagine New York City was like this. New York City is always loud. Times Square, Statue of Liberty, any of our monuments is loud Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But Texas, also the same thing we had when we went to Kentucky, is almost ghost town. <laughs> Look, major highway, no one's there. The only loud person here is me. I'm just always loud. I took the trip with Joan Nunez. Follow him at Instagram at, at Mr. Barstars. I'm gonna be famous. I'm gonna be famous. Yeah. Hey, How y'all doing? What this guy has to say? I'm curious what that guy has to say. Is he selling it? Oh yeah, he sells it. Look, this guy's store. How much you think it is though? Oh, okay. Here you go, guys. Y'all go. Go up from there. Do you mind if I report it? No, sir. Go ahead. Go, go, go ahead. again from the beginning? Okay. You see the building right in the front. See the bottom window? Start from the bottom window and count six windows up. That'll be the second window from the top. That's where Oswald allegedly shot President Kennedy. Okay? It covers the motorcade route. Both the shots. Now, the street behind you is Main Street. The motorcade is coming down Main Street here. It made the left right turn, went towards the building. Then it made the left turn and came down Elm Street. Okay, now follow me over here. Now we got two exits out here in the middle of the street. This is where the president was shot. The first hit, see the exit in the middle of the street there? That's the first shot the president was hitting the back. Somehow this bullet came out his throat. That's what the government say. They named this the throat shot, okay? Fight it on down. That's the head shot down on fucker. Now the reaction, you see it? Is there another X? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, I see it. Yeah. Okay, now the reaction the president gave us here, like someone from the front hit it. Oswald couldn't have hit him because the head went back when he was hit. See what I'm saying? The yeah. most the bullet took his head back. See the edge of the fence? That's the grassy knoll. Behind that fence, possibly another shooter. That's what they covered up, okay? Now that was a grassy knoll witness that was going to tell his story that match up back here. Look way across the street there. See that white building back there with that red top? Yeah. That guy name was Lee Bowers. He was the railroad supervisor. He witnessed the guy here in the back with the rifle. But when it was his time to go to court, he never made it either. Somehow he died in a car accident on the way to court. That was the only grassy knoll witness that was going to talk. That's uh, crazy. And it covers the grassy knoll. And, now, these are souvenirs. Now, that's the original paper that was printed back in 63. Now, this is the journal. How much it cost? Ten, just a ten dollar donation for the set. If you want to just get one, that's just five dollars. You want to get the set, that's a ten dollar. That's What's all. What's the difference between the two? Huh? What's the difference? Well, you're getting a set. You're getting a set. You're getting two two papers, and you get one here. Oh. You want the set? I just want one. Huh? Just one? Oh, you want the regular paper? I got four bucks. You Thank one? you, sir. You got a dollar? No. You ain't got enough. You don't. That's cool. If you. Let me give you five dollars. Wait a minute. Uh -oh. <laughs> I owe you a dollar. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but he, he, Jack Ruby shot him before he made the court. How much after that he got arrested Wait. did he get shot? About two days. Two days. 
I gave you four and no, one. No, no, this is the same four he gave you. And you gave me the 10, so yeah. I'm supposed to get $5 out of that. Yeah, I gave you 10. You gave me back one. So we're at the John F. Kennedy Memorial. So as you heard in the clip before, the guy explained to us how the, he got shot at the sixth floor at the bookstore while he's coming up, exiting off the, exiting into the highway. Now we're at the memorial, they built this after he was shot. So I'm not familiar with the memorial, I didn't know there was one. So it's pretty much a big uh, open tomb. So quickly reading, it was an open tomb. It creates an illusion at night. The light itself looks like it supports the structure. It's like roofless rooms. Oh, you can go inside of it. And there's something inside. And there's a... The word, his, his name is carved inside. That's the only thing that's carved inside. The letters are painted in gold and capture the light from the white floating column walls. Sounds beautiful, let's check it out. Oh. The joy and excitement of John F. Kennedy's life belonged to all men. So did the pain and sorrow of his death. When he died on November 22nd, 1963, shock and agony touched human conscience throughout the world. In Dallas, Texas, there was a special sorrow. The young president died in Dallas. The death bullets were fired 200 yards west of this site. The memorial designed by Philip Johnson was erected by the people of Dallas. Thousands of citizens contributed support, money, and effort. It is not a memorial to the pain and sorrow of death, but stands as a permanent tribute to the joy and the excitement of one man's life, John F. Kennedy's life. Sad, such a great president. Adelia Plaza is the infamous site where President John F. Kennedy gave his life for his country, right here on Elm Street, in front of us here. That X marks the spot where President Kennedy was at the time of the fatal headshot. My name's Marshall, and uh, Robert Groden comes out uh, every weekend. He lives here, and uh, he is a, uh, a hero in the case. He served on every investigation that the government's ever done on this. If you saw the movie JFK, he wrote it, played four parts in it, and was the chief consultant on the film. Way back in 1975, he released this. This is the end of the shooting sequence of a home movie that was filmed on top of this pedestal right behind this tree. It became known as the Zapruder film. And it showed the opposite of what the Warren Commission said, and got the case reopened, and in the end, got the Warren Commission reversed by Congress. Notice the cement structure here that goes all the way around the park. This is a memorial, but not for President Kennedy. It's for a guy named George Bannerman Dealey. President Kennedy's memorial is on the other side of the Red Castle-looking courthouse right over here. Now, there were a lot of shots that day. President Kennedy was actually uh, on a political trip here. He was going to a luncheon, came through downtown Dallas. And when he reached Elm Street here, 15 shots rang out, or at least 15 were recorded. There was a police officer out here, had his microphone stuck on it, back at headquarters on a dick belt recording device. 15 shots were recorded. Now, the Warren Commission, in their report, they said there were only three shots total. The rest were echoes. I don't know if you're a shooter. I'm a shooter. I, got, I can tell you that uh, echoes don't leave bullet holes. And they said the rest were echoes, that there were only three shots. But um, there were three guys hit multiple times out here that day. James Tag, a bystander, just died two years ago of cancer. But I was lucky enough to know him for over 20 years. He was standing over here on the street on a little median there by the underpass. He was one of 400 witnesses out here that day. And he was standing over there, and he was going to wave at him when they went by, and he never got a chance. He was in too much pain. He'd been shot in the jaw. 
He had a bad day, but he lived. The great state of Texas had a governor named John Conley. He was sitting right in front of President Kennedy. And John Conley had a bullet that went through his right wrist. He had one that went through his chest. He had one that went in his left thigh. He was all shot up. But he lived as well. President Kennedy didn't fare as well as the other two, in case you haven't heard. The car turned the, whoops. The car turned the corner, started to come this way, and the shots began. The first shot that hit anybody hit President Kennedy in the throat. It was a slightly downward angle, and it came out on his back. And that hole back here was four times the size of the entrance. Now, that's normal. Entrance wounds make little holes. Exit wounds make big holes. It blows everything out the other side. But two seconds later, a shot came from behind the president. I don't want to argue with it about where it came from, but it hit the president in the back, about two inches below where the other one popped out. Now, this one did not go all the way through the body. It was removed during the autopsy. And the bullet was hand-delivered to J. Edgar Hoover at FBI headquarters. It was never seen again. Robert here was the staff photographic consultant to Congress. He served on all the investigations. Here's an autopsy picture of the back of President Kennedy. And you'll notice the back of his head. And there's the exit wound from the throat shot. Two seconds later, he was shot in the back. That's the one that went in about that far and was removed during the autopsy. The bullet was actually hand-delivered to J. Edgar Hoover at FBI headquarters, but it was never seen again. The headshot's where it gets really controversial. Again, this is filmed at 18.3 frames per second. And I start 1 18th of a second before the headshot. By here, Governor Conley's already been hit three times. He's turned, he's falling back into the lap of his wife. He's passing out. James Tegg's already been hit on the cheek. Missed shots have already hit the car, the street, the sidewalk. 15 shots had rung out and uh, were recorded. Now, President Kennedy, he'd already been shot in the throat by this frame here at the other end of the block, and then two seconds later, he was shot in the back, knocked forward. You see how he's forward off the back seat there? Jackie's checking on him. What's wrong, sweetie? Boom! He's hitting the head. Now, the Warren Commission report says after the head shot, President Kennedy's knocked violently forward. Folks, he's already forward. Once he's hit in the head, in fact, he goes back into the left, the opposite of what the Warren Commission said, bounces off the back seat, and comes back forward. The whole back of his head is blown out. Now, this is called the occipital protuberance, that big bump back there. It blew out of his head where that X is. It flew through the air and landed about a foot to the left of that light post across the street. That's a big hole. That's an exit wound. You can ask any cop, healthcare professional, hunter, hitman if you're from Jersey. That's an exit wound. Had that shot come from up here where the Warren Commission had said all the shots came from, then there would be a little hole back here and a big hole here. Instead, when you look at the autopsy pictures, it's the opposite. Instead of a little entrance wound, the whole back of his head was blown out. All 22 doctors that saw the body, every one of them, said the bullet entered here from the front and blew out the back and part of the top. The part of the top is what Jackie grabbed off the trunk of the car and tried to put back on. She was in shock. 34 years old, second youngest first lady ever. The only one younger was President Garfield's wife. She was 21, pervert. Anyway. <laughs> the smoke from the headshot came billowing out, not from up here, but from over here. There were about 400 witnesses out here, and 80% of them said some of the shots came from right there. People ran up here, captured a guy behind the fence who claimed to be Secret Service holding the area secure. Secret Service said they didn't have anybody up here. Said whoever it was bluffed them and got away. Said the same thing at the Warren Commission a couple months later. When Robert Roden released this film back in 1975. It shocked Washington so much, they voted to reopen the case with a congressional investigation. It lasted three years, and in 1978, Congress reversed the Oswald Lone Gunman theory. They said it was a conspiracy. Now, by definition, that means two or more people operating in secret. That's where they've been. Unfortunately, about 80 to 85 percent of public school history textbooks to this day still ramble on about Oswald and the Warren Commission, decades after the government reversed that nonsense. Every homeschool history textbook we've ever seen is completely updated. You know, the little kids with all the science projects? Those guys. But anyway, Robert has the pictures because he was the staff photographic consultant to Congress, one of the top photo analysts in the country. He volunteered his time and expertise, and uh, they used him uh, on these uh, different investigations. Church Committee, Rockefeller Commission, the House Select Committee on Assassinations, the Assassinations Records Review Board, every one of them since the Warren Commission. And it was his job to analyze all this stuff, and. These are his copies. They're free to look at. Just have a free look. Um, my fingers are froze. I will warn you, if you're going to Spaghetti Warehouse or something when you leave, page 26 through 29 are 
some more of those autopsy photos. Um, but have a free look. Next time you see the movie JFK, uh, it's on TV nowadays sometimes. Watch for Robert. He's kind of like Alfred Hitchcock. He keeps popping up everywhere. Here he is with Kevin Costner in the courtroom scene. And here he is playing the doctor in the emergency room working on the president. He doesn't even have an MD license. Huh? I don't know if that's legal. But anyway, played four parts in there. So watch for him. These are 10 to take home or they're free if you get the documentary, which he sells on his website, jfkmurder.com, for 35 This weekend, it's a $20 bill. Tax included, and he gives you the $10 magazine with it for free. And he'll autograph them for you. Anyway, have a free look. If you get any questions at all while you're walking around, don't hesitate. Just let us know. And I do thank you so much for coming by. People, but I'm, all, I'm looking at the art. I don't like to idolize people. This is the one that we got shot of. I think he's, he's been idealized.